Oh, it certainly has been a while. Hello, viewers! Welcome to a new video. Today, I'm going to be playing the Peace Without Victory mod, which has been made by Nikita Nefedev, for Darkest Tower a hot Lion game. Since the good old number of 1111 is coming up, I figured why not make a World War 1 game. And to my surprise, I have not played World War 1 Germany properly in a video yet. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to be playing with these settings and not other goals. Well, I wish to experience the flavored events in this mod and just see what World War 1 Germany has in store for us. So wasting any more time, let's jump straight into the video. Ah, the Deutsche Kaiserreich, the strongest nation in Central Europe and one that really, really wants a war. So I'm gonna give one to them. So for starters, our industry is, is not as good as it usually is. However, this also means that other countries have enough industrial capacity. So it all evens out. We're starting on May 1st instead of whenever the regular World War I start date does. So that's neat. Unfortunately, we can't move the political sliders anywhere, but I don't think we'll need to. When it comes to ministers, I believe that everyone here satisfies me, besides so Mr. Herman Kuhn. We'll need this person, the resource industrialist, for what I have planned. And to further my plans, I'm going to rush a few technologies here. Oh yeah, this technology makes it so that units don't take forever to produce, so let's remove it. Same goes for the industry one. And it comes to production, as you expect, we can't really produce that many things here. However, what I'm going to make are a few submarines. Oh wow, what a holiday. I'm sure there's a way to celebrate this. Ah, and let's invite a guest. Oh, and looks like things have kicked off. I'm obligated to join this, aren't I? And thanks to the mod creator, I get an event that gives me a bit of a wartime out of fire and some manpower. Well, Austria, I did what I could. You're now on your own. Oh, I'm sure they'll accept this. Oh, well, would you look at that? So let's spice things up a little bit and invade the Netherlands as well. Unfortunately, the option to invade the Swiss isn't here, but I just get shot twice and lose, so that is for the best. Now I can accept this, but I don't think this would be a wise decision, so no. It feels amazing to encircle France in World War I every time like this. While it's not a Dunkirk, I can live with this. Well, since Austria-Hungary decided to be competent now, I'm going to get Bulgaria into the faction. Oh, deja vu. Well, no. I just want to see an event fire before I finish the Frenchies off. So I'm not going to kill them just yet. Oh? And it looks like for some unknown reason, the Japanese have joined the war on my side. Well, this is gonna be interesting. At this point, I can really win the war at any moment. But where is the fun in that? Oh, and it seems that they reinforced it so I couldn't break this pocket here at all. However, what they also don't realize is that I can reinforce the attack as well. Oh, just look at all these encircled units. You know, the only thing I can ask is, what the hell is wrong with you, friends? Alright, after another encirclement, since the France is down to 50 divisions. So that's progress. While I was having fun here beating France up into a pulp, it seems that the Russians have uh, done the same to Austria-Hungary, so I'll have to save them somehow. While the AI in this mod is significantly different compared to vanilla and feels as if they're so much harder to play against, they are very aggressive and tend to get encircled more often than not, so that leaves some room for survival. Oh, and it looks like my ally here, Austria-Hungary, just died basically. Oh, well, this is going to complicate things a little bit. Well, this does complicate things quite significantly. Believe it or not, the war is still not yet lost. So while our situation leaves more to be desired, the Russian army is a shell of its former self. I can probably win it with these divisions, however. Doing this without any cavalry is quite difficult, however, I'm managing it, so I'm in a decent position right now, I'd say. Oh, it looks like my advance has actually equated to something. Well, we're going to send Lenin back to Russia. We just took Petrograd. They should really stir up more trouble than there already is. Ah, and I suppose the revolution has happened. Yep, I took a bit more land, so I'm curious if they're going to accept my offer. Nope. Well, I don't mind beating up on the Soviets even more. Aha! And it seems that they have accepted. Well, truth be told, there was not much their army consisting of peasants with guns at this point could have done against me. All's well and well. Oh, yeah. Now what I'm going to do 
is a bit of a 6D chess move. Before the events to release all of German Eastern European puppets, I claimed that territory. So now, I'm going to get it instead of them. Oh no. <laughs> anyway, oh, who could have foreseen this one coming? Uh, Pilsuski is gonna be hella mad. Poland only has a war, so this is like the expectation and reality meme. This is the expectation. This is the reality. Slow Ukraine. Oh, wait. That was 1917, and at this point, there's only one thing left to do. Ah, yep, I got the stalemate on the Western Front event, and seems that. Pushing in will be impossible now. Oh sure Finland, I'm gonna help you against the Reds. Not! And this, ladies and gentlemen, is how you run circles around the country. So this is the final event I wanted to play out. For a free wartime plus 10% modifier that will last me an eternity. Oh, they did not wish to fight after that at all. And we get the Treaty of Versailles. The reverse one. While we are at it, it's time to integrate provinces everywhere. And same can be done about the Dutch and Belgians, where I just annex their country. Step conference? Uh, I don't really care. Yeah, well, why not, George? After winning the very first world war, we get quite a few events. For example, Belarusians accepting a German king and these expeditions. This is just a free land grab from Soviet Russia for your puppets. Well, it hypothetically should be. And let's invite Czechoslovakia into our sphere. Problem is, I probably have all this land claimed, so it's not going to work. Or just not gonna work at all. Ooh, southern expedition. Time to get to China. Now the Caucasus I'm not going to give to the Soviets because it has oil there. Oh no, I was incorrect. It worked and resulted in some good old border core. And it looks like my little protectorate of Lingan has started a war. Hope they can win this. Oh, where have I seen this? Oh yeah, I'm definitely the main dominant power here in Europe. So I have decided to give my puppets back their original borders. Primarily I can't really extract much industry from them because I have full AC takeover off and uh, there was a lot of border war. But this kinda looks okay. And since we beat the Dutch up as well, we can create an Indonesian puppet. Oh, it looks like despite how odds, fortunately or unfortunately, Yugoslavia has formed. Well, it's not Yugoslavia quite yet. Oh, there it is. And it looks like we get this little interesting event. Basically, if Austria-Hungary dissolves and only Austria remains, can enact this, which is a premature Anschluss. Oh yeah, oh yeah baby. We have inherited Austria, but they are not our core territory. We can fix that pretty quickly by integrating them. And we can invite Hungary into our sphere while we're at it. If this doesn't make you lose, no not November. I'm not sure what will. Now it looks like I can't quite consolidate my influence in Finland, because I don't have the divisions for it, since most of them got disbanded after the Great War via events. So that's unfortunate. However, Japan got a very nice reward due to joining me, since they got this large chunk of Siberia here from Russia, so good on them. And also the other part of Sahelin. Ooh, and look who's in charge of Hungary here. Truly about the most progressive nation in the world. I'm looking at this Russian civil war as a spectator, but just have one question. What the hell is Kolchak doing? Oh yes, finally. My industry is finally growing at an alarming rate, from 0.11 to 12 per day. Oh yes, the very first German Wunderwaffe, the A7V. Oh, so that's what you're doing. Ah, of course. Well, he's a nice nail leader, I suppose. Oh, and looks like France went paternal autocrat after a coup, and they're led by Mr. Philip Petain. Well, this should be interesting. It would be quite fun to play as this friends down the line, though. And I also got end of the army limits which means that I can produce any units within a reasonable time, and my manpower growth is insane. So now I am practically unbeatable until the mid-1930s, since I'll have an overwhelming manpower advantage compared to every other country, since I'll just be growing my manpower for 14 years straight. I believe this is a nice place to end it off. We completely won World War I and dominated the French. The White Russians have won their little civil war. The Ottomans are kind of alive. Oh, they're better off than our timeline, I'd say. Plus, they have Armenia for all intents and purposes. And the only other winner of the Great War will be Bulgaria. So, if all of you want a part two, just let me know. Goodbye, everyone.